Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today I'm going to be testing six LHR card models using the latest version of Gminer in Windows and Hive OS. And I'm going to be sharing my best overclock settings with you, as well as the mining results and some mining comparisons at the end. If you haven't already subscribed, smash down on that subscribe button. Stick with me, let's get started. Looking at the GitHub site for G Miner, I see there's two releases done this week, 2.88 and 2.89. 2.88 has a really big important change, especially for us Linux and Hive users, because now for the first time we can display memory temperatures for our cards with GDDR6X, like the RTX 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 Ti, as well as 3090 cards to tune and optimize our cards even further. If you're using this from Hive, at the time I'm recording, I could only download natively 2.88 using the latest version of Hive OS. And in Windows, you're just going to want to come to the GitHub site and download the latest version of the G Miner and install it on your computer, and then you'll be able to apply the overclock settings I'm going to be sharing with you shortly. For my demonstration today, I'm going to be using a dedicated test rig with all six of my LHR card models. Let me show you what it looks like. Here's my dedicated test rig. I have a MSI Gaming X Trio 3060 V2, Zotec 3060 Ti, EVGA 3070 LHR, Founders Edition 3070 Ti, EVGA 3080 LHR, and an EVGA RTX 3080 Ti for the win card. These cards are situated on a rig that has exceptional ventilation and it's running on an HROC H110 Pro BTC motherboard, and it's powered by server power supply 1200 watts, as well as an EVGA 1300 watt G2 power supply. So I have plenty of power for this rig to test. When mining with LHR cards, it's essential to have the best overclock settings to give us the highest hash rate and optimal efficiency, but it's also really important that after that miner runs that first time, you note down what the LHR tune parameters are, especially with G minor because it's a long process normally for it to calibrate and auto-tune those individual cards. Some cards may get 74% of the full hash rate. Some cards may get 75 or 73. And it all depends on, I guess, silicone lottery as well as how well your cards are configured and how well it's running. But it's a lengthy process for it to go through that calibration. If you stop and restart the miner again, you don't want the miner to become dumb and start at the beginning and have to recalibrate every time. So it's very important to mark down those LHR tuning numbers. And once you know what those numbers are, you can kind of skip to the head of the line. You don't have to go through that whole process. So in Hive OS, you would just go to your flight sheet and click on your setup miner config. And in here, you're going to see G minor configuration towards the lower portion of the dialog. There's extra config arguments. And here's where you would specify your dash dash LHR underscore tune settings for each of the individual cards. Notice this list is space separated. It's not a comma separated list. And you'd be able to specify your values right here. So when you have to stop and restart the miner again, the miner is smart then. It knows, hey, I already have my great overclock settings, which I'm going to give you shortly, as well as what your LHR tuning is, so it doesn't have to waste a lot of time fumbling around trying to calibrate and see where it can mine to. And you can easily do this in Windows as well. So in Windows in a batch file, you would just be adding at the end of your batch file dash dash LHR underscore tune with your parameter or parameters, depending upon how many cards you have. And if you have multiple cards, especially if you have full hash cards, you would just be normally specifying a value of zero in here. And hopefully this tip helps you get going, and especially if you have to stop and restart that miner again, at least you'll be mining at your optimal efficiency right away. For my demonstration, I'm going to be testing all six of my LHR card models, everything ranging from an RTX 3060 V2 all the way up through to an RTX 3080 Ti, and all the primary LHR card models in between. But before we begin, let me give you a little bit of an overview of our screen layout we're going to be displaying while we're doing our testing. Off to the side, you're going to see a miner, and that's running from Hive OS. That's a miner that's session that's been running for over an hour, and it's given me great stable results if you want to examine them while we're covering the different cards one by one. Above me, you're going to be seeing Hive OS numbers. You're going to be seeing Hive OS, as well as the driver we're using to test this is 470.86 in Hive OS. You're going to be seeing for each individual card, I'm going to be displaying the locked core clock, the memory clock offset, as well as the fan. 
For Windows users, I'm going to be displaying the complete command line at the very top of the screen. It's going to be the command to run the miners, set the stratum, the wallet, as well as pass in the locked core clock, memory clock, and fan offsets. And even optionally too, I have a suggestion hint there for the LHR tune value that I was getting on my settings too. So with that all said, and now you have a pretty good familiarity with my screen layout, let's get into our testing. My first card I'm going to be testing is an RTX 3060 V2. This is my MSI Gaming X Trio card, and it's a really thick card. It has very heavy radiators, especially for a 3060 card. And using a locked core clock of 1500 and a memory clock offset of plus 2600 and hive, I was getting good results. I ended up getting 36.9 mega hash at a 0.355 efficiency. The next card I'm going to be testing is my RTX 3060 Ti. This is my Zotac white card and it has Hynix memory. So unfortunately I'm limited on how high I can overclock that memory. I can only go about 1025 in Windows and about 2050 in Hive OS. But using a locked core clock of 1440 and a memory clock offset in Hive of 2050, I got very good results of 44.9 mega hash at a 0.351 efficiency. The next card I'm going to be testing is my RTX 3070. This is the EVGA XC3 card. It's a great card and it is extremely efficient, but using a locked core clock of 1080 and a memory clock offset of plus 2600 in Hive, I was able to get very good results of 46.4 mega hash, better a 0 0.450 is my efficiency. Probably the most efficient LHR card there is. The next card I'm going to be testing is my RTX 3070 Ti. This is my Founders Edition card. It's a very value card, but it's a real strong workhorse and a lot of power, I think, on that GDDR6. And it's given me great results using a locked core clock of 975 and a memory clock offset of plus 3000 in Hive OS. I got fantastic results of 60.4 mega hash with a 0.345 efficiency. The next card I'm going to be testing is my RTX 3080 light hash rate card. This is another EVGA card and it does extremely well using a locked core clock of 1440 and a memory clock offset of plus 2600 in Hive. I was getting really good results as well as the temperatures while holding very well as two. I was getting 75.2 mega hash at a 0.327 efficiency, but it's really great being able to look at the miner and finally be able to see a temperature. So I'm seeing I was running at 90 degrees on my 3070 Ti, 92 degrees on my 3080, and 88 degrees on my RTX 3080 Ti. So this is a huge step forward with what we're seeing in the miners. And now T-Rex is coming along with the same ability too in the latest version of the T-Rex miner. But it's great to be able to see these thermals now in Hive OS. Moving on to my final card. My final card I'm going to be testing is an RTX 3080 Ti. This is my further win card. It's an EVGA and it's a beautiful card with the neon. It's got great cooling and it's given me some great results in Windows and Hive even in the past. And now even today, I'm getting some stellar results with it. The card gave me 92.11. That's right, 92.11 mega hash on average with a 0.371 efficiency, which is probably one of the optimals I've ever seen this card run on Hive so far. It's really great being able to finally see these thermal temperatures for the memory right inside the miner. Look at this, I'm seeing 86 degrees on my 3070, 90 degrees on my 3080, and 84 degrees on my 3080 Ti. So being able to see these numbers help me to dial in my numbers and get them running even more efficient. You may want to adapt your overclock settings depending upon what your thermal temperatures are on these cards. Overall, I got really great results with these. G Miner 2.88, I was seeing 36.9 mega hash on my 3060, 44.9 on my 3060 Ti, 46.4 on my 3070 with a 0.450 efficiency, 60.4 mega hash on my 3070 Ti, 75.2 mega hash on my 3080 LHR, and 92.11 on my RTX 3080 Ti, and it was still holding with a 0.371 efficiency, which I thought was fantastic. Now, how does this miner stack up with the latest versions of the T-Rex miner? Well, we've recently covered the T-Rex miner and those results are right here. So you can see that they are really, really close. The summary numbers for both miners are within about one to two mega hash apart for the whole rig, which is fantastic. But looking at these numbers, I definitely see that although they're very, very close, it looks like G minor may have the edge on efficiency slightly on this. They're really, really almost identical. And I got great results out of both miners. So I hope this helps you going forward. 
I'm really glad to make this video and share my best overclocking with you with the latest version of the G Miner. And now that we have the ability to see the memory temperatures, wow, this is a game changer. And let me dial in my numbers even better and feel more confident at least with what I'm seeing because now at least on my 3070 Ti, 3080 and 3080 Ti LHR cars, I was able to finally see the memory temperatures. So that gives me a lot more confidence in between these results. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up like and and smash that on that subscribe button. It really means a lot to us. We welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Till next time, stay safe. Happy mining.